You may have heard the term dry grouting, but then again, maybe you haven't. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you what dry grouting is, and I'm also going to show you the dry grouting method using different types of tessera. And I'm going to show you that right now. When it comes to the term dry grouting, it can be a little bit confusing as it conjures up using dry grout to grout with, when in actual fact you're using wet grout. Once the grout has hazed over, that's where you go in and remove the grout without using water. You can use rags or you can use an old sock or whatever you use, you don't use water. I prefer to use the term dry grouting removal because I consider dry grouting to mean a couple of different things. Also, it can be confusing because some people, when they create a mosaic, they may put dry grout into a small area to see if that grout colour works with their overall mosaic. And then they'll vacuum it out and then they'll continue the process until they find a grout colour that works with the overall mosaic. I prefer to, use, I prefer to choose my grout colour when I'm choosing my tessera, but that's just a personal opinion. Now some artists prefer to use the dry grouting method and others prefer to use the normal wet method. I don't know of any professional tilers that use the dry grouting removal process. However, when I'm grouting, I prefer to use both processes. I initially use the wet method and then I use the dry method. So when do you use the dry method? Well, perhaps you've created a mosaic where you've got exposed wood and you need to be careful not to get uh, water on that wood then that's probably a good time to use the dry grouting method. The other thing is perhaps you're, uh, can't, you can't use water because it's inside or you have to be very careful with water getting around or perhaps you're in an area where there's water restrictions. That's also uh, good times to use the dry grouting method. Or perhaps you just prefer dry grouting over the wet method, which is also fair enough. It's like adhesive. Some people prefer to use one type of adhesive and others prefer to use another type of adhesive. Neither is wrong as long as they suit the project you're doing. So what I've got here is I've got a piece of Marmox board which is very similar to Weedy board and I've just put a whole heap of different things down and I've used broken crockery, I've used uh, glass gems, I've used stained glass mirror, I've used uh, all sorts of different things, Miller Fiori, cabochons, things with textures, just to see how the dry, <laughs> dry, just to see how the dry grouting method works using different materials. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and mix up some grout, come back and then we'll apply this and see how the dry grouting method works. I'm going to be using old rags. Now some people uh, will use socks. It just depends what you want to use. As long as whatever you use, the fluff doesn't come off and go into the grout lines. Okay, I've got my sanded grout here and I'm just giving it a bit of a mix because it, I've been letting it slake for a few minutes. Now I'm just going to apply it to the top of this mosaic and then I'll rub it in. And I like to do with I like to do this with my hands, but it's uh, up to each person do it the way that they think, or the way that they that's most comfortable. I mean, you can use a, a paintbrush with the bristles, most of the bristles bristles cut off. You can use uh, pottery, uh, one of those plastic. I don't, can't remember the a, a pottery kidney to uh, rub it in anything but when you're dealing with uh, different shapes then uh, I like to use my hands you know when when you're dealing with di different textures and things like that a lot of people hate grouting but I actually like it and I just want to make sure I get it into all those grout lines squeeze out any air that might be in them And I'm not pushing terribly hard, just firm. And I'll be interested to see how this all works with the uh, dry grouting removal method.
scrape the excess off now. I know some people that have actually used the wet method and gone to the uh, dry grouting method and I know other people that have started off with this method and gone to the wet method so I think it really comes down to what you personally are comfortable with working with it. What feels right for you? And what gives you the best results too is another thing. Like I say, I like to use both methods. I don't want to just have one particular method. Okay, I'm going to let that haze over now. I've removed the bulk of it. And then we'll come back and uh, see how that works getting off that uh, grout. But it has to haze over first, which it's starting to do already. Okay, back shortly. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes. I'll go in now and uh, go in with a rag. It's pretty well hazed over. And we'll see how well it cleans up uh, because I'm interested in seeing, especially in the pieces that are textured, because I generally, if I'm using textured pieces, I, I like to use the wet method because you can get it right in there and get out those bits in the texture. go in with this and just pull out some bits out those centers and I do this even with sander grout I go in and clean up the lines so I don't consider that to be a really major issue having to do that because I really do like clean lines. Okay, well so far I think it looks really, really good. Um, what I'm going to do is leave this a little bit longer and then I'll come back and do a final clean on it. But to me, it's going to come up all right. You may see here some bits of black grout in these vitreous tiles, but that's because they're pitted. And that's why I don't buy pitted vitreous tiles because you see when those pits fill up with grout, you will see that color. Some people like that look, I don't. Um, in the textures here, it's come up really quite well. Uh, I, I don't have an issue with that. I, there are some marks that were on this and that's what you see here is the black grout has gone into some of those marks. Uh, but overall, that's pretty good. Where there will be, I feel, a bit of an issue, well, not really an issue, but a bit of extra cleaning in it is in these cabochon type things here there's some grout in there and I think um, well I know when I've used 
the wet process, I've been able to get those a little bit cleaner and then go in with a final clean, but you could easily get that fixed with a toothbrush uh, and just scrape out some of that black grout out of there. So anyway, I'm gonna let this dry a bit, we'll come back and then uh, I'll do it, uh, give it a final clean and we'll see, we'll see what we really think at the end. I've left it a while, now I'm just going to go in with this clean rag and just do a bit of a final clean. The tessera in all of it is quite shiny, uh, so I don't see it as being a problem doing the dry method. I think there's a market for both. So there you go, it's quite shiny, it's worked out quite well. Well anyway, I hope you've taken something away from this video, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, certainly, I think there's a method for both, as I said previously, and it really comes down to which one you prefer, or you can be like me and just use both methods on the same piece. And I find that works really well. Well, enjoy, and I'll see you in the next video.